So this guy wanted to know what island was Oda referring to as the one place filled with Devil Fruit users. And it's interesting, because this was actually an SBS question asked during the East Blue Saga, so this was way before the Straw Hats even entered the Grand Line. And therefore, the only Devil Fruits we actually saw in action at that time were Luffy's Rubber Powers and Buggy's Chop Chop Fruit. So the place that Oda is referring to isn't actually an island, it's the Grand Line itself. And that's the place filled with Devil Fruit users. I feel like since we've been on the Grand Line for so long, people tend to forget just how rare Delphruits Fruits are in the grand scope of One Piece, and that's because every arc we're always introduced to new people with very wacky powers. But if you go back to early One Piece, Devil Fruits were more of a myth than reality, and that's because the majority of people living in the One Piece world will rarely come across people with the power of the devil as they call it. And because the Grand Line is a place where pirates stake their lives for their dreams and the marines serve to protect their justice, that's why the highest concentration of Delphruit Fruit users exist in this area. So a fan wanted to know if a ship can eat a devil fruit, and not gonna lie, that's a fantastic question. Now as a betting man, I would definitely say that yes, a ship can eat a devil fruit. I mean if Spondum's sword could consume a devil fruit, and Mr. Four's gun could consume a devil fruit, then why not a ship? On top of that, contact with water alone doesn't inhibit devil fruit users. Oda has actually stated in an SBS that devil fruit users will only be restricted if they're half submerged in water. And since boats are naturally buoyant, this would disregard those negative aspects. It's kind of like how Brooke can run on water and not be affected. And honestly, adding a devil fruit to a ship is just plain awesome. So this guy wanted to know, is it significant that celestial dragons have no desire for devil fruit powers for themselves? And I would say that it's definitely important. Vegapunk's going theory as to why devil fruits exist in the first place is because people wished and dreamed for their existence. It's this very notion that makes humanity what it is. The celestial dragons are essentially gods, and all their wishes and dreams have been granted since the day they've been born, so why would they require the power of the devil? It also paints a picture as to why Doflamingo was so different from the other celestial dragons because he actively consumed a devil fruit for his dream of becoming Pirate King. That's why he's the heavenly demon. Now the other reason is because the celestial dragons get some sick kick for feeding devil fruits to slaves, as was the case with Boa and her sisters, which just further underlines their deplorable nature. In One Piece, with the way devil fruits seem to be balanced, Logias have kind of taken a backseat with their powers being overshadowed by users of mythical zones and the raw powers of Paramecias. But what if Logias had another type to go against the two zone types and the many Paramecia types? Let me introduce you to mythical Logia type devil fruits. And when looking to mythical zones, we know that to qualify as such, a devil fruit must allow the user to transform into creatures that are subject to myth and legend, which in turn grants them insane powers. So, a mythical Logia would be a naturally occurring phenomenon, consisting of only elemental properties that has a story attached to it or is the subject of a myth or legend. Think of it like if the Bermuda Triangle was manifested itself into a devil fruit, or if there was a devil fruit that embodied hell itself places with stories attached, comprised entirely of elements. Bonnie's devil fruit is unironically one of the strongest paramecias in all of One Piece. Having this age manipulation ability that she can impose on herself is almost like pseudo-immortality, because despite how old she gets, she's always in her prime. And the fact that she can turn her enemies into either little kids or senior citizens is the perfect hack because if your hockey is strong enough, literally no one can take you on. But she can also use that for her advantage. For example, if she was present at Marineford, she could have returned an old Whitebeard into his prime and they probably would have won the war. But what's actually crazy is that this is just scratching the surface of her abilities. Because in the most recent chapters of One Piece, she was able to actually inflict a near-death experience on some Marines. Life is literally in the palm of her hands. So let's talk about some of the most broken Devil Fruit combinations. First up, I got Robin's Hanahana Nomi paired up with Sugar's Hubby Hubby Nomi. This is all types of terrifying because your reach is absurd, and when you touch someone, they turn into a toy, and everyone forgets about them. And let's also say you bolster your hockey so you're a top tier with the upper echelon, and therefore no one is contesting you, so you can become the king of the pirates. Up next, I got Aokiji's Hie Hie Nomi and Akainu's Magu Magu Nomi. In this case, you basically become Todoroki, except with absurd buffs because you're the literal elements of magma and ice. Basically, Basically, the entire world is turning into Punk Hazard. Now, a combination of Luffy's Nika Fruit and Blackbeard's Darkness Fruit would be borderline ridiculous. To put it simply, you not only become the sun, but also a black hole. Now, that's in gravity. And the last combination that would be absolutely insane is a mix of the Goro Goro Nomi and the Goro Goro Nomi. Lightning and Earthquakes, the human manifestation of the apocalypse, also known as Aiden Ross. I believe the Earth is flat.